Hello, my brothers and sisters. I am Shepherd Anthony, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about a very serious and delicate subject that might be affecting your spiritual life, marital life, and relationships. I am talking about sexual demons, also known as spiritual spouses, the incubus and succubus. Have you heard of them? Have you ever dreamt that you were having a relationship with someone unknown? Or have you ever felt that you were being abused while you were awake? Do you have difficulty maintaining a relationship, having children, having harmony in your marriage, or even feeling desire for your spouse? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you might be suffering from a very serious spiritual problem and you might be under attack by a sexual demon who wants to distance you from God and other people. These demons want to contaminate you with a spiritual perversion that will bring you confusion, condemnation and anguish in your mind. But how can you identify if these demons are tormenting you? Brothers and sisters, the Bible talks about this and how this is possible but it also reveals the weapon we can use to fight against this oppression. All right, I know this is a controversial subject, it is a heavy subject, but it is important that we as Christians are aware of this reality and know how to protect ourselves and be free from these demons once and for all. So I invite you to watch this video until the end with a lot of attention in a spirit of prayer because I will answer all your questions based on the Word of God, okay? Before starting, please click on the subscribe button right below the video. Next to it, a bell will appear. Activate this bell and select All to receive the upcoming videos directly on your cell phone, wherever you are. Okay, so let's begin. Brothers and sisters, it's been a while since I have been receiving many prayer requests from people who say they suffer from a very serious spiritual problem. They feel that a demon has relations with them during the night or even during the day. Can you believe this? It is more common than we imagine and some of these people report that they cannot have children in the physical world because they have repressed desires or traumas related to motherhood or fatherhood. And other people say they have no harmony in their marriage or can't even get married. Sometimes a person feels that something abuses them even when awake, as I said at the beginning of this video. And I've even heard of a person who was at a shopping mall and felt that a demon was controlling her body and abusing her. Brothers and sisters, I know this may sound strange, absurd or wild to some of you, but this is nothing new. Once, I saw a comment from a girl who said she woke up naked in bed, alone, and didn't even realize what had happened. I've also heard of a girl saying that a man would come every night and have relations with her. It was disturbing. It brought great emptiness to her heart, and she didn't know how to get rid of it. And really, I imagine it is something very difficult to deal with. It is very complicated. But let's start reading what the Bible says here, because there is a verse in the book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verse 14, that says something very interesting. Pay attention, wild animals will meet with hyenas, and wild goats will bleat to each other. There, the night creatures will also lie down, and find for themselves places of rest. Look at this, brothers and sisters. This night creature I read to you in other versions of the Bible, is called Lilith. If you read this passage in your Bible, it will probably have an explanatory note saying Lilith is a night creature. In many religions around the world, there are demons called incubi and succubi, which are male or female entities that come during sleep and seduce people, having relations with them. Brothers and sisters, this is not a myth. It is the reality that people face and suffer daily and they often feel ashamed to comment with someone because people will think it is madness. And if we read in the book of Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says that the sons of God, whom I believe to be the fallen angels in that context, came to earth and had relations with women. They had physical relations with them. Remember that these fallen angels are rebellious. They do not obey God. 
So even though it is forbidden for an angel and a human to have relations, they do not care about it, do you understand? The book of Jude tells us that these angels crossed the boundaries that God established for them, and therefore the Lord has kept them in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for the judgment of the great day. These entities may have this kind of relationship. Besides, we see in other parts of the Bible where angels took on physical form, walked, talked, and ate. If this happens with angels, it can also happen with demons, which are fallen angels. According to Genesis, these spiritual beings came and had sexual relations with women and produced a hybrid offspring called Nephilim, who were giants. Now, brothers and sisters, this problem continues to this day. Demons still have sexual relations with people, but now they do not produce physical offspring with these people, but contaminate them with a spiritual perversion, making people confused, disturbed, and wanting to end their own lives, bringing many negative effects in people's daily lives. Sometimes these demons disrupt relationships, marriage, peace and well-being. And we know that Satan's ultimate goal is to bring unrest and distance people from God forever. And remember what I told you at the beginning of this video about succubi and incubi. These are creatures that came from ancient traditions and beliefs and are often associated with seduction and sexuality in various cultures around the world, including the Middle East, Asia, Africa and Native American cultures. There are legends of demons that seduce humans during sleep. For many scholars of Christianity, these creatures have been reinterpreted as demonic entities that torment men and women in their dreams. The word incubus comes from the Latin incubare, which means to lie upon. Therefore, it would be a male demon that seeks relations with a sleeping woman. The word succubus comes from the Latin succubere, which means to lie beneath. It is associated with a female demon related to a sleeping man. Sometimes these demons are also associated with the figure of Lilith, the night creature I mentioned to you in Isaiah. These demons can cause disturbances in sleep and people's lives, provoking erotic dreams and physical sensations. And they can also affect the emotional and spiritual state making people feel drained, guilty, condemned, or accused. And that is why, brothers and sisters, many people who are attacked by these demons feel completely disheartened with life. They no longer find pleasure in anything, in any relationship, and this often causes divorce. But pay close attention to what I am going to tell you. It does not mean that all people who face these problems are under the influence of these demons. But if you have recurring experiences of intimate relations in dreams with unknown or familiar entities, you may be dealing with this kind of spirit. Many people who seek spiritual deliverance report having suffered this type of attack, and often, after being delivered, these experiences stop. Married people often return to having love and affection for each other, and for those who are not married, Often God leads them to marry because those demons were preventing them. After all, these entities are very jealous of you being with another person. Now, I will help you identify where these oppressions might come from and show you how to eliminate them. Brothers and sisters, these demons can usually come through five open doors in your life. The first door through which sexual demons can enter people's lives is through witchcraft, this includes all kinds of witchcraft, spells, love potions, voodoo, and everything that is done against the person in their sentimental life. This happens when someone does a work against you, perhaps someone who wants to be with you, or someone you hurt, or someone who could not be with you. So they go to a spiritualist, a sorcerer, or a witch, and do work against you, and place all kinds of love potions on you. And as a result, you start having these strange experiences where these demons now do not let you have a healthy relationship with anyone. And the second door through which sexual demons can enter your life and the lives of people is through sexual sin. 
And this, brothers and sisters, includes all kinds of promiscuous sexual sins that are outside the relationship between husband and wife, right? Brothers and sisters, this is very serious. If you have these doors open in your life, close them immediately. Stop practicing these sins because they are an entrance for these sexual demons because they have an intense desire for perversion and immorality, and it is as if they feed on it. And the third door through which these demons enter is through heredity. In some cases, these demons are passed down through the family line, and they had access because of previous generations that may have been involved with occultism, witchcraft, or had some relation with sexual immorality. And this can include even abuses, okay? These demons pass from one generation to another until someone rises and says, enough, I don't accept this anymore. Jesus has already entered my life. I have already given my life to him, and now it's enough. I don't accept any more demons, condemnation, or curses. Then, you break this evil influence over your life and your children. The fourth door through which demons can enter a person's life is through sexual abuse. Besides the suffering that the person already has from the abuse, they can still be tormented by these demons. This is not their fault, but it is the demon who always plays dirty, and he takes advantage of this situation. And if the person does not stand firm with Jesus, if they do not open their heart to Christ, the demon can enter and destroy this person's life. I remember a situation where I prayed for a girl who had a demon of lesbianism, and she told me that she had been abused many times by a family member. And you may be wondering, but Shepherd, the demon should have entered the other person who did this, not the victim. Brothers and sisters, we must understand that a person who abuses another already has demons accompanying them, influencing them. Understand? So when this person commits the abuse against someone, at that moment there is a transfer of spirit because demons are transferred through sex. I made a video on my channel about this called What Happens in the Spiritual World When You Go to Bed with Someone? I will leave it at the end of this video so you will understand exactly what I am talking about, okay? Unfortunately, abuse is one of the weak points where demons enter and the person needs to seek healing and deliverance in Jesus so that anything that is attached to them can be broken. And the last door through which demons enter are soul ties. Brothers and sisters, a soul tie happens when you have a strong emotional bond with someone. Maybe you didn't even have a physical relationship with them, but this relationship was very dependent on you, and this person moved away from your life, and what is left now is your bitter soul. The enemy takes advantage of this weak point and enters as this spiritual spouse and starts to bring torture, starts to bring torment and often violence. Many times the person wakes up scratched. Brothers and sisters, it is terrible. Spiritual warfare exists, and it was because of this that I wanted to record this video. If you identify with any of this, if you want to leave a comment here, even to encourage others to fight against these demons, this will surely help many people, and I will now share with you some practical advice so that you stop being tormented by these demons. I truly believe that God can and wants to free you, but first, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Give it truly, you know. It's not just lip service, but it's with all your heart. It's not just making a repentance prayer, but consecrating your body and life to Him. And when you give your life to Jesus Christ, your body becomes a living temple and the Holy Spirit begins to dwell in you. And the Bible guarantees that the evil one will not touch you anymore. He will never enter you. He can influence you if you let sin enter your life. But now the Holy Spirit must control you. Amen. And I will pray for you in a little while, here at the end. So do not leave this video. And if you have already given your life to Jesus, now you need to declare with your mouth that you belong to him, that you are no longer part of the kingdom of darkness. 
and that your body, mind and life are properties of Jesus. So declare where you are. I belong to Jesus. I am his exclusive property and my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. The third thing you should do is renounce and rebuke these demons in the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, Jesus said that he gives us authority in his name to cast out demons, to trample on serpents and scorpions. So break now all evil influence over your life and do not accept it anymore, okay? The fourth thing you need to do is cancel anything they have planted in your mind, in your body. What happens, brothers and sisters, is that sometimes this demon, when he has sexual relations with you, plants confusion in you. He plants in you like a seed that later grows and becomes a problem in your life. And then you cannot produce real children, but you will produce more sins, even more perversion, more promiscuity. Then comes broken relationships and divorce. So, if you want to be free once and for all, do not accept the intrusive thoughts that come into your mind. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus and seek to live a holy life. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, that the roots will pull up every plant that the heavenly Father has not planted. So seek to remember where this started. Was it when you were away from the Lord's paths? Try to find out the root of the problem because maybe it could have come from your family, but it doesn't matter. Jesus made you a new creature and you must take possession of it by confessing your mouth. Amen. And the last thing you need to do is seek deliverance. If this situation continues, if it is something recurrent, you prayed, you renounced, you cancelled, and it continues, seek spiritual help. Seek the help of a shepherd or a prophet and seek someone in prayer, you know? I know many churches do not believe in this, but most do, and you can ask for prayer from someone with a deliverance ministry. Ask these people to pray for you, and I am sure God will completely deliver you in the name of Jesus. Before we pray, I want you to pay attention to one thing. As I said, if this spiritual attack has happened to you once or twice, it does not mean that you have a demon. It may simply be a spiritual attack at night, a disturbing dream. So, just because Satan came to you in a dream and did something like this once or twice, does not mean you have a demon. In the same way, if God Jesus appears to you in your sleep at night and gives you a vision and a dream, it also does not mean that you have the Holy Spirit. Isn't that true? You may not have repented of your sins, but God is already talking to you in your dream. So, only you know if you gave your life to Jesus and are willing to walk with him. The Bible gives many examples of people who had a visitation from God and still did not convert, for example, Nebuchadnezzar, Pharaoh. So these people had revelations but still did not surrender to Jesus. So now, if you understand this message, I will pray for you. After this prayer, I ask one thing. Share this video with at least three to five people on WhatsApp. I am sure that God will use you. Many people are suffering in this area and they do not talk to anyone. Amen. So let's pray now. Lord, my God and Father, we approach your presence now. Father, thank you very much, Lord, for this video and this message. And thank you very much for the life of each one who is here listening to this word now. Father, we recognize your love and your grace, and we recognize, O oh God, that the truth is what sets us free, and your word is the truth. And in the name of Jesus now, Father, as we are battling against this evil that many people have faced in silence, have not told anyone. And we know, my Father, that the enemy is behind this. Father, your word teaches us in Ephesians 6.12, that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against demons, against spiritual entities that are in the spiritual world. Oh, my Father, it is about this spiritual battle, especially in the field of sexuality, that we want to ask you. Father, have mercy on us and give us, Lord, victory against this evil. Father, 
Many of your children are facing turbulent nights and dreams that cause confusion, guilt and anguish in the mind. Other people, my father, are losing love in marriage and are being undermined by spiritual influences that want to destabilize your project. O oh God, which are the families, father, your word says that man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. But the enemy, my God, wants to destroy this plan and cause fights and misunderstandings. And that is why, my God, we cancel all evil against us now. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, for having opened doors in the spiritual world for practices that do not please you. Often promiscuity in marriage, people have gotten involved, my father, with witchcraft, with sorcery, with mediumship, so many paths that are not by your word. Father, I know many did this in ignorance, but now they inherit spiritual battles from their ancestors and families. And there are still many people, my father, who have faced wounds from sexual abuse, from deep traumas that the enemy uses to imprison these people. O oh God, extend your hands now, Father, release forgiveness. May your truth prevail, Father, because the enemy is a liar and wants to imprison people. Lord, may these people never have disturbing dreams again, have demonic visitations in bed, in their body, in the name of Jesus. Cover this person, my Father, with your blood. May this person use the authority you have already given them, Father, as a shepherd of this flock, I recognize that the authority is in the name of Jesus, not in me or any human being, but in you, Jesus. And I ask you, protect these people now. May this person feel, my Father, your peace, your joy, and may your angels be encamped around this person. In your name, Jesus, I renounce. I rebuke all evil spirits, all incubus, all succubus, all demonic force that tries to root themselves in dreams, in relationships, and people's emotions. O oh, my Father, bless the marriage of every brother and sister praying with me. May the flame of true, pure, and holy love reign in these hearts again. O oh, my God, may trust be restored, and may each home be a reflection of your kingdom here on earth. Pour out, my God, blessings without measure. May your joy, peace, and intimacy return to this couple. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we recognize that we are often flawed. We are sinners, but it is in our weakness that your power is perfected. So, my God, do not leave us helpless when we are inclined to sin. When we are weakened, Come with your strength and lead us to holiness. I thank you, Lord, because you are faithful, good and merciful. And it is in your name, Jesus, that we take possession of healing and deliverance once and for all in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray and thank you. Amen. Glory to God. O oh, my beloved brothers and sisters, believe in the miracle and deliverance. The word has been released, you have taken possession, and now the evil one has no power against you anymore, okay? Believe that the Lord is already encamping the angels around you, in your bed, in your house. And remember to share this message. Many people need to hear about this. Unfortunately, it is not discussed in churches. But I hope this message reaches many hearts through you. We have reached the end of our video, and I hope you like it. If you're looking for inspiration, knowledge, and spiritual connection, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Subscribe to our channel now, leave your like and comment to strengthen our community. And if you want to help us continue sharing religious stories that touch hearts, become a channel member. Together we can make a difference and strengthen our spiritual journey. We're counting on you. We've left the link in the description of this video so you can become a member today. Continue watching videos about the history of the Bible. I will leave two recommendations here on the screen. God bless you. We will get to the next video.